in the flesh was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. John the Baptist, the greatest prophet, there will never be a greater prophet than John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. And so, so if you if you really rightly divide and look at everything that the Bible teaches about the Holy Spirit, how, how people come to the conclusion that it's not of God by a few scriptures out of context, catering to what they want to cast doubt about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's lots of others throughout the book of Acts, the church, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and so we're going to get into that uh, today. And so I understand. Then there's, so there's bad doctrine, but then there's just goofy, flaky Pentecostal people that bark like dogs and act like idiots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's right. That people are like, excuse me, I want no part of that. Amen. And hello, neither do I. Amen. Uh, and so so that those kind of extremes really turn people off, and they turn me off. Amen. And I, I personally think that it, it's embarrassing, uh, you know, to the Spirit of God uh, to say that this is what He's doing. I'm like, I don't want Him making me to be like a dog. Come on, somebody. My, my wife calls me a dog enough. I don't need <laughs> Right. And so there's lots of stuff, and, and, and rightfully so. I mean, I understand the, the issues that people raise, but you know what I have found? That most people don't personally take the time to actually study it for themselves. Yes. They just, they just listen to what a preacher says, about how the Holy Spirit, so that's wrong, and tongue, that's of the devil, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And they just say, well, the preacher said it, so it must be true. Amen. Yeah. And so that's where a lot of our doctrine, or what are, a lot of our beliefs about the Holy Spirit come from, and are influenced by weird, flaky people. Yeah. And so we're just like, you know what, I'm good. <laughs> right? I'm good. I don't want none of that. I don't need that. I'm, I'm good. But the truth is that we do need the Holy Spirit. We do need the baptism of the Spirit. We do need to be endowed with power from on high yes. to accomplish the work of the ministry. Yes. Yes. Amen. All of this, you know, the 120 that was in the upper room were not all apostles. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Right. I mean, if it was just for the apostles, then why did 120 people get filled with the Holy Spirit? Right. I mean, think about it. You've got to think this through. You know, and, and because these are a lot of the arguments that some of you were raised in, some of you were told, you know, and some, you know, some of you, uh, have, you know, have had bad experiences yourself when it comes to Pentecostal type people. You know, before there was ever Pentecostals, they were called believers. Amen. Amen. Right, yes. Amen. There was never Baptist and Presbyterian or the Christian church or this church or that church. They were believers. And guess what? The early believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. But then man's opinion and, and intellectual, uh, you know, ism, if you will. Can I say that? Is that, is that a good word? Intellectualism? I know she's like totally like, no, that's no. And so... So, so all of that, and it's almost like, it's like, well, now that we have, see, we're smarter than God. We got this thing figured out. Right. Yeah. You know, we're a word people, you know, and so on and so forth. And so am I. And, and I, I kind of I I figure that if the early church needed the Holy Spirit, the baptism, then I'm, I'm assuming that I need it too because I'm, I'm in pretty bad shape. Amen? Amen. And so... So that's what I want to talk to us about. Because that's who we are. Okay? And so I know a lot of times people they, they're looking for churches or they're visiting and so on and so forth. I mean, you're you know, most of you can attest to this. Um, you'll never hear me for the most part that I know of. I'm, I'm not saying it'll never happen, but for the most part, on any given Sunday, people come here for months and months and months and never hear me speaking in tongues or you know, the church getting all crazy and, and all that stuff. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. And so I think sometimes people kind of go, well, that, you know, we kind of like that church. We like that church. And, and then uh, someone gives a, a tongue or, or whatever, then someone interprets it like the Bible says. Right. Amen. And they're like, well, I don't know about them tongues. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel it's important for us to um, just be who we are. Amen. 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 And, 
and this is who we are, this is who I am, and uh, again, I love Jesus, man, and I've been saved, I've been filled with the Spirit, uh, I do not like flaky, goofy, out of balance, Amen. you know, it's all spirit, right. you know, it's all about my feelings, who I feel, 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 right. well, then you're just getting in a ditch over here, right. and nor am I just, you know, like, the word, the word, because the, 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 the letter killeth, right. you see, I mean, we're, we're just kind of like too much wine, but no bread. Right. Yeah. Or way too much bread and no wine. Right. Either way, you're, you're out of balance. Amen. Right? And that's like having McDonald's fries without the double quarter pounder. Absolutely. You've got to have them both. Balance. You just got to. You cannot have one without the other. Amen. I know somebody's like, I just like the fries. And see, that's what the church, well, I'm just word, just word. That's all I need. That's all I want, word. But you need the spirit. Amen. And then some people are just like, hey, spirit, I feel this, feel this. And then they just start getting flaky and weird, right? And, and, it, and it turns turns people off. Right. And so I think that there needs to be a balance in our lives. I think there needs to be a balance in, in, a, in a true uh, spirit-filled, full gospel church uh, that people are operating in the gifts of the spirit. You know, the thing about it is that I, I never try to make a big deal about operating in the gifts and so on and so forth, because we're, we're supposed to make a big deal about Jesus. Amen. The whole point of operating in the gifts is to edify all, Amen. to build up the church, right? And to encourage one another and, 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 and you know, all these gifts and stuff that we'll get into of the Holy Spirit, God gave to the church. Right. But yet the church somehow has decided that we don't need that stuff. Right. How is that even possible? That we somehow have been convinced that we don't need the gifts of the Spirit in the church. Because we just got the Word, brother. We got the Word now. We don't need them gifts. Right. But yet, there's been multiple times when, as I have prayed for people, and as I've been up here on the stage, and the Spirit of God is moving, He's leading, He's directing, so on and so forth. I, I, the Spirit of God would whisper to me, and He would say, someone here is having pain in their right side. Right. And I'd be like, okay. Was that you, God? See, because it's like we think that God don't speak. Right. It's just like just His word. God is true, yeah. but God God does speak to us in that still small voice, yeah. Yeah. in that whisper. He leads us. And let me just say this: God will never lead you, and, and I believe this to the core of who I am. God will never lead you to do something that is contrary to His word. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. It's like those folks that say, God told me to divorce my wife. That's right. You are stupid. And God never told you that. God told me to do this. God told me to do that. Really? See, what that generally means is, God told me so you ain't got nothing to say about it. Right. Amen. It's kind of like a truck card. Like when, you know, we were playing spades, you know. You get that out there like, ah, ha, bam! <laughs> oh, I can fly places today. <laughs> I get into it. I slam on that. But it's like the trump card. It's the trump card for believers, God told me. God told me. And so then there's never any counsel or discussion about, are you sure? Why would God say, why do you think God said that? Why is God saying that? It's just like, oh, God told me. And so we got to be real careful. See, it's, it's become one of those things that we as Christians, especially if we've had any kind of full gospel exposure, we kind of throw it out there a lot. Don't, well, God told me. God told me. Right. God, God told me. God told me this. God told me that. God told me this. God, you know. Wow, man, you you should be, I'm surprised, right? I mean, it's, it's a lot of God saying, right? And um but yet their life is, there's, there's these just, it's out of balance. It's just all over the place. You're never sure what, the, where you're, what you're going to get. You with right. me? Yeah. And so you got to be careful about that. So as you get into uh, the things of God and, you know, spiritual type things, uh, you got to be careful that you keep your life in balance. And, and, and a sure way to do that is have checks and balances around you uh, in your life, accountability partners, so on and so forth. Um, that keep you in check uh, that you can go to, you can bounce stuff off. You know, there's a lot of times I feel a certain way, 
You with me? Right. I feel a certain way. And I'll call up one of my pastor friends. I'm like, yeah, this is what I feel. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, no. No, that's not right. You, you shouldn't. That's, that's your feeling, right? And so, so it's important for us as believers to have those things and to understand that we are not led by our feelings. Feelings are never to lead us. The Spirit of God is to lead us into all truth. Our feelings have a way of leading us into error. Right. And so if we are dictated, or if we, or if we are being dictated by our feelings, we will always get in the flesh and get into error. Amen. Always. It doesn't mean that we don't have feelings. But we have to properly uh, filter those feelings through wisdom and through the counsel of God. Can you say amen? amen. I'm preaching good, and you all stare at me like a calf at a new gate. <laughs> this is good teaching right here. Amen. Amen. And so, so we, so that's what I want to. That's what we're trying to do here. I want to establish this. Some just kind of really just what Scripture says about the Holy Spirit, and what you decide to do with that is completely on you. You, there is no pressure here. There is no pressure here that hey, you got you got to be speaking in tongues if you're going to come to church here. You better you need to be speaking in tongues. You will not. That will not happen here. Yeah. If it does happen here, it ain't going to happen for me or any of my leadership. Right. And if it does happen to you, somebody's pressuring you to, you need to do this, you need to do that, then you need to come tell me, and we will deal with it. Amen. I'm just throwing that out there. It's not a threat. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. Right. Because there's no pressure here. There's no pressure. Jesus said, hey, go away. Be no. here, so you get your honey up there or else. Right. That's right. Go, you right? And so there's no pressure here. And so, you know, I remember being, how many of y'all were ever kind of pressured? You know, you know what I'm talking about, like pressured into the things of God, right? And so, <clears throat> I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first got saved, I mean good and saved, y'all with me? I'm talking saved. I'm talking saved. Right. I'm talking saved. Amen. I, I mean, I was saved, right? right? I mean, saved. I was saved. Hallelujah. More than the first time. And, but, <clears throat> so I went to, again, <clears throat> a church that was full gospel, you know, spirit of God, baptism, speaking in tongues, all kind of stuff. I, I ended up in that church and uh, went there for six months, heard people doing it, and I'm just like, that's interesting. Right. I'm like, that's different. Right? Wonder what that is. I'm not sure about that. Because those, aren't those questions that we had? Sure. Because it's, it's, it's spiritual. It's something supernatural that happens, and we are pretty much kind of natural sometimes. Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of us went to just kind of natural, traditional type churches. None of that goes on. None of that ever talked about. Right. Just come to church, be a good person, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, that's right. right. And so then you get around some of that stuff, you're like, hmm. I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to have, I haven't, I'm not going to ask you to do it today because that would be putting them on the spot. But there's a few people here I think have awesome testimonies um, that were once um, not per se a full you know, believer, baptism of the Spirit, people, but in their experiences and, and what how God uh, worked in their life is simply amazing. And I think it would be an encouragement. So um, you know who you are, and so I'll be seeing you later <laughs> to give some testimony. Amen. And so, <clears throat> but I was, and so I, I go to church. Um, I'm there, and then I, you know, I begin. I wanted everything that God wanted me to have. Amen. Amen. When I fell in love with Jesus, I wanted all of Him, not just part of Him. I wanted everything Jesus could offer me, and then some. I'll take you extra too, God, if you got it, right? Right. Amen. And so I began to, you know, I mean, I was just so full of the love. I was born again. I was saved. If I was to die right then, I would have went to heaven. That's right. right. There's some other goofy teaching that says, hey, if you don't speak your tongues, you're going to hell. Oh, it's so sad, isn't it? It's so sad. And so, maybe I see there and there. That's not what we believe. Uh, so I was saved, man, going to heaven. But I, was, I started to start, man, I want God. I want, I want more of God. I just want everything that God has for me. Amen. But then I read a scripture that said, Jesus said, talking about a, a natural man giving his child bread uh, instead of a stone. And then Jesus himself said, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit yes. to them that ask? Yes. And I just thought, well, hey, 
I'm asking. Right. Holy Spirit, don't understand it, not real sure about it, yeah. but I know it's from you. I want it. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's just what that was me. I'm just like, hey, I'm all in, man. This thing's got a hold of me. I want all I can get. And so I started seeking, man. I started praying, God, just fill me. I started telling my you know, friends, my spiritual you know, uh, uh, parents at the time, I said, man, I just, yeah, I want to be filled, man. It's like, oh, man, he's like, he's praying over me all the time. I had so much oil spread on my head, it wasn't even funny, man. And, and, but, but my experience was that as they were asking God to fill me, it was like they was trying to coach me right. into speaking in tongues. Right. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying I didn't like it. Right. And so don't listen to my experience and say, well, it's got to be just like pastor. You just ask God if, if that's a desire of yours. Then you just ask God, say, God, I want everything you have. Fill me however you want that to happen. I'm just open. Amen. And I'm ready, God, to receive that. So, but so they tried to coach me. And I was like, man, you know, they'd be praying in the spirit. And, and they'd be like, okay, it just starts. I'm like, man. And then, I, you know, every once in a while, I'd be like, Bleh. And they're like, yeah, we got it. He got it. I'm like, no, I didn't. It's like, ah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I'm thinking that in my mind, I'm thinking, no, nothing has happened here. Right. You know, I can move my jaw and blah, 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 a little bit. And, you know, people get all like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. Right. I'm just trying to get you away from me, you freak. <laughs> Leave me alone. Right. Come on, somebody. And so, so I remember, most of you heard this story, but for the sake of the, the message here. I was at my home church. I've been seeking God, asking God. And here's the thing, folks. I, I really believe that this is absolute key. I believe this is key. I wasn't seeking or just trying to speak in tongues. That's right, right yes. I think a lot of people just think, oh, I want to speak in tongues so I, so I can say I did it. Right. Mm -hmm. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just speaking in tongues. Right. It is an empowerment. It is a infusion of God's power yeah. in our lives yeah. it is an anointing it is it, 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 it will take you further faster than you'll ever get it any other way yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes. and so so I remember I was, I was up there I was praying here's the thing folks I think it's crucial I wasn't seeking an experience I was seeking Jesus yeah. there you go. I wasn't seeking just something to happen to me so I could say oh yeah hey man I did it too I'm one of you I wanted God to give me everything he had. Amen. And so I remember just seeking God. I'm, I'm up at the altar, and I'm just praying. I'm not praying. I'm just praying. I'm just in love with Jesus. Amen. My eyes are on Jesus. My heart was on Jesus. Amen. My thoughts were on Jesus. I'll never forget this. It was just all about Jesus. Amen. And the next thing you know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> Nobody slapped me in the head. Okay, which I'm not going to slap you in the head here. If, if, if you're one of them fallers, I'll hold you up before you fall just to be fallen. You don't have to. Listen, the, the, one of the things that irritates me more than anything is people that fall out and they get up and they're as mean as they was when they went down. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. It's just me. And so, you know, it's like we, I, you, you can go to services and it's like this just service after we're right in the middle of revival, man. And then we revive us over, man. There's people doing Jericho marches, right? Up and down the aisle. Woo, Jesus! Jesus! I know all that stuff. You know, the back and forth in the church. We got Jesus. Yeah, we did. We got Jesus. How about you? You know, then the, oh, yeah, well, we got Jesus. Yes, we did. You know, all this stuff. And I'm right in the middle of it. Yeah! Woo! You know? And. And then we go to Country Kitchen and everybody's rude to the waiters. Right. Yeah. How is that possible? Right. Yes. They tip 50 cents. How is that possible? How is that possible? Right. I mean, there's no, there's no generosity flowing from their lives. No kindness. No goodness. Right. But boy, they're full of spirit. Right. I've never understood it. And so... And so, man, I was out, man. And I was in the presence of God, man. It was, it was, a, it was a most amazing thing. And I'm laying there in the presence of God. And I remember all I was saying was, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. 
Jesus, I just love you, Lord. Thank you. I was so happy to be saved. Amen. I was so happy to know that God loved me. Right. Amen. Right. Yes. And that's all that mattered to me, man. Amen. That's all that mattered to me. Yeah. And, and so I was just in love with Jesus. I'm hanging out with Jesus on the floor, man. Just like, Jesus, I just love you, Lord. And I just, the presence of God was so tangible, so real. And, and I began to feel a physical uh, sensation in my stomach. Uh, it wasn't, you know, hey, time to go eat type thing. It was just that, it just the, this rolling. I mean, this, I mean, literally I felt that. I was like, man. But I, I, I was at such peace. There was no fear. There was no, like, what's going on. I was just at peace because I, I knew I was in Jesus' presence. And then that, that physical thing just it come up here and stop, right? I mean, literally, I remember I was laying here and stopped right here. And I heard this still small voice just say, open your mouth and begin to speak. Yeah. And so I just opened my mouth and began to speak and out it started flowing. Yeah. And I mean, I was just flowing and flowing and flowing. And man, I just began to weep uncontrollably. And it just flowed and flowed and flowed. And so that was my experience. And ever since then, um, it's, it's not just a one-time thing. I, I'm always asking every day, God, just fill me, God. God, fill me and just renew me. God, help me to walk in your presence. God, help me to know you. Help me to hear your voice. It's not just something, yeah, I got it type thing. Are you with me? Amen. All right, so that's the introduction. Now we get into the message. Amen. Um, Amen. <laughs> here this morning. But the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He's not just some presence or spirit out there floating around. He is God. Yes. Amen. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is eternal. He is omnipotent, uh, which means all-powerful. In Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 35, as we all want to just recap a little bit of last week, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the Holy Spirit, at Jesus' conception, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Uh, the Holy Spirit is omniscient, which means all-knowing. Yes. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the uh, Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. Yes. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent, everywhere present at all times. In Psalm chapter 139, verse 7 through 10, it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? And so we see that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Uh, just a few other things to recap. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, the Holy Spirit uh, was active during the creation yes. of the heavens and the earth. Um, and the earth. Uh, in John chapter 3, verse 3 through 5, the Holy Spirit is active in the regeneration or the, the born-again experience of fallen man. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the Holy Spirit is actively involved in the resurrection of the body. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, uh, verse 16, the Holy Spirit was active in the inspiration of Scripture. You know, the Bible says in all uh, uh, Scripture is God-breathed, is Spirit-breathed, inspired. The Holy Spirit has a will, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. The Holy Spirit has emotions, Romans chapter 15, verse 30. And so the Holy Spirit is not just an it or something. He is a person. He is uh, the, uh, the Trinity. He is God all by himself. Okay? And so, so as we see the Holy Spirit in his divinity, he's the third person of the Godhead. And he indwells the believer. At regeneration, at the at you, are, you can't be born again without the Spirit of God convicting you of sin and of righteousness and drawing you to the Father. Right. You can you can come to church, you can join a, a membership role, you can be sprinkled, confirmed, whatever. You can be baptized in the Jordan River itself. But unless you have been born again by the Spirit of God, unless you are a new creation, unless old things pass away and all things become new, you have not been born again. See, it is staggering 
how many people attempt to be religious and do quite well at it. Right. They can be religious and go through the motions and know what to say, know what to do. They can even work in the church, give in the church, support the church, but have never really truly been born again. That's right, yes. And so those people will live their entire life, right? right? They will live their entire life thinking that I'm a good person and I go to church right. and I know some Bible stories and I can quote a few scriptures, but they've never been born again. Yeah, come on. They've never had a transformation yes. of their person, of who they are. Yeah. You know, I'm not everything that I should be, but I guarantee you, I am not who I was. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. I am not who I was. But I am becoming new. I am a different person today than I was a year ago. That's right, yes. Come on, somebody. Right. I'm a different person today than I was five years ago. Why? Because old things are passing away. Yes. I'm maturing. I'm growing. I'm walking closer with the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm in the Word. I'm pursuing Him. It's, it, that just doesn't happen because it happens. Right. It happens because there's this transformation and there's this relationship, this ongoing relationship with Jesus. Amen. That I'm convicted of sin and of righteousness. I can't just keep doing stuff. Right. And so, those folks, listen, I said it last week, I'll say it again. You go to hell coming to church here, it's your own fault. Amen. Yep. Come on, somebody, because right. I am preaching to you the gospel. Right. You must be born again. Yeah. Right. You can be baptized, confirmed, join a church, I don't care what you do, but unless Jesus himself said, unless you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Yes. Paul went on to expound on it. He said, those who the works of the flesh are evident, and those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right, right, yes, amen. And so, but yet, but yet, we think because we had some experience, or we think because I, I'm a member of a church, or I got baptized when I was seven years old. Right. Yeah. I went through this, or I did this, I did these religious activities. We think we're good with God. That's right. Bible talk, Peter said this. This is what they said after he got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. He preached a message. Mm -hmm. You know what he said? They said, what must we do to be saved? You know what he said? You know what the first words out of his mouth was? Let's be born again. Anybody? Yeah. Want to help me out? He said, repent. Yes. <laughs> and be baptized. Come on, somebody. He didn't say, well, if you just join the church. If you want to become a member of the church and just you just want to join, sign right here. You know, just, just let it tell us you'll be here. Tell us you'll be faithful. Amen. Yeah. Right. Just join the church. That's all you got to do. No, he said, hey, I'll tell you, one half, repent. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, repent is like, ooh. Repent means to change direction. Right. Right. Change direction to change your mind, to, to be convinced otherwise. Right. Amen. And it's, it's staggering how many people are just locked into a life of religiousness. Right. Yes. Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit is just like, it's just dying on the vine. It's dying on the branches. There's no life. There's no love. There's no compassion. There's no mercy. There's no forgiveness. There's no none of that. Yep. Amen. Right. Yes. It's just this, you know, standoffish. That's not the love of God, folks. That's right. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. I can tell you that much. Come on, somebody. That's right. And so, so we gotta get this right. We gotta get this right. We must understand. <laughs> The work of the Spirit of God in our life. And so God, God is moving in the life of, of believers. And so in Philippians chapter 2, and verse 5 through 8, it says this. It says, Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, can, who made himself of no reputation. And so we see that. In Luke chapter 4, verse 14, it says this. It says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding. So Jesus himself, here we have the Son of God, God in flesh, was filled with the Spirit. He came in the power. His power came from 